Hi, I'm Simon Sherwood, formerly of The Register and now glorying in the quasi-managerial title of Editorial Director of ITnews.com.au and CRN Australia. But I'm still keeping a really close eye on VMware and at VMworld this year, the thing that I suppose really set the imagination racing was ESXi on ARM. Now, if you're watching a V Brown bag, I'm absolutely certain that you know what ESXi is. Um, well, I'm guessing that perhaps you're not uh, completely up on that. Now, the significance of ESXi on ARM for me starts with what I have here in my pocket, which is a smartphone. The significance of the smartphone is just about every smartphone on the planet runs a CPU built on technology licensed from ARM, the British microprocessor design company that, unlike Intel, makes its dough by licensing designs rather than doing designs and then building them. ARM CPUs won mobile. They won mobile completely and utterly. Um, Intel ran away, whipped and crying with its tail between its legs from mobile, which is pretty remarkable when you consider just how freaking enormous Intel is. To get CPUs working in smartphones, especially high-end smartphones like that one, which is a Galaxy Note S9, very nice, thank you very much, chip makers had to get really, really good at building chips that ran cool and fast and were very small and used hardly any power. And of course, all of these qualities are extremely desirable for chips anywhere, anytime. And especially when you think of all the money and all the infrastructure that's required to build and operate data centers at any scale, the fact that there is now you know, billions of installed devices around the world using microprocessors that are getting pretty good and pretty fast and which are happy on battery power and make so much heat that they don't burn a hole through your pocket, except when you're buying them, this starts to get pretty interesting. And out there in the industry, this has been noticed. There are a number of firms that are starting to build server class CPUs and indeed whole servers around ARM CPUs. And some of them are making stuff that on paper looks pretty damn good. I mean, if you Google the Thunder X, I think that goes up to, you know, uh, 32 cores, so 64 threads, impressive I.O. There's a, quite a few people out there doing that, including Qualcomm, which of course dominates mobile chips. ARM CPUs and kind of server-grade ARM CPUs have started making their way into actual servers, although nobody's buying them yet, but increasingly into appliances, into networking appliances, into storage appliances. And this is where we start to loop back to ESXi on ARM. <coughs> when I asked Pat Gelsinger why VMware had done ESXi on ARM back at VMworld, he said something that I think was really, really telling. Namely, he doesn't know, and the industry doesn't know, who is going to win on the edge? So we all know that out there on the edge, there are going to be millions upon millions of computers, either filtering data or gathering data or doing compute closer to where people are so that applications that just don't like latency get compute and storage out where they need it. So by porting ESXi to ARM, VMware is making a really big bet that Intel either won't win out on the edge or that there's a big chunk of market share that Intel won't get out on the edge. Now, in a very, very VMware way, VMware is saying the real thing about ESXi on ARM is it will mean that the way you do stuff today in the data center and on the edge with x86 is just the way you're going to be able to do stuff out on the edge if ARM kit happens to happen and happens to become a thing out there. And that's great for ops teams who like vSphere because it means that their skills and their tools are going to be more applicable in more places 
without necessarily a huge learning curve to get there. <clears throat> but the most fascinating thing for me in terms of the future of the industry and where, you know, capital B, capital T, big things are going is that VMware, which has been joined at the hip to Intel from its earliest moments, sees the need to make this bet on the alternative platform. Now, VMware at this point says this is absolutely not about servers. This is the, about things that end up on the edge. But when I was told that by VMware execs, I was reminded of what happened when VMware first released the VMware storage appliance. It's a toy, we were told. This is for developers to play with, we were told. This will never really become a thing where you'd consider a virtual appliance as a replacement for a storage array. And I can tell you that what? We're looking at about 10,000 real vSAN users now with real applications. We've seen hyperconvergence go crazy with VMware and others. Virtual storage in about six to eight years went from being a toy that nobody would recommend in their right mind for real work to being something that is now considered absolutely a top tier way to run mission critical applications. So what does this mean for ASXi on ARM? Well, I would not bet against it becoming reasonably prevalent more than a few years from now. Now the question that people always then ask me is, well hang on, what workloads could possibly run on ARM in the data centre? And the answer to that is really, really simple. Linux is totally ARM friendly. The guys behind ARM's ARM powered CPUs are in there on the kernel development team now, getting Linux ready for their stuff. I suspect that it won't be long before we're starting to talk about IT operations that split between core and or legacy applications on x86 in public clouds and on-prem and new classes of um, edge and or cloud native applications that run on a mosquito fleet of distributed ARM devices scattered across the internet. And guess what? VMware's going to be there. <laughs>